Hook, Lion, and Inca is a highly interesting update, adding a lot of much needed ocean life to the previously rather bare deep seas. It also introduces in-depth fishing mechanics, akin to Stardew Valley or Terraria, complete with bait, tackle, and some new actions. This video will not go incredibly in-depth into the fishing mechanics, it is a rather complicated system, and most of the information is simply slight number variations between different tackles or fish. To get started, you'll need a sea fishing rod used to catch peculiar piscus from the ocean depths. The sea rod is built with one board and six silk, and has two inventory slots that appear when it's held, one for each type of tackle. The first type are known as floats, which increase the range at which a line can be cast, and the accuracy of every cast. Lures are the second type, and range from simple bait to advanced lures used to increase the attractiveness of your cast to certain types of fish. Floats are only consumed when the fish escapes, and otherwise have infinite durability. The most basic float is a stick, giving tiny accuracy and range bonuses, and the most advanced ones are made from blueprints dropped by the Malbatross or Moose Goose, giving the greatest bonuses. All floats except for the stick must be crafted at a tackle receptacle, which is built with four driftwood, one electrical doodad, and one rotted fish corpse, acting as a prototyping station. Only two basic floats will be available from the station when it's built. Further blueprints must be unlocked by feeding the machine with flyers dropped from the aforementioned bosses, or as rare drops from normal bird mobs, unlocking a float made from the respective bird's feather. This process is similar to how statue recipes are unlocked by the potter's wheel. Lures are the second tackle type. They either consist of raw resources or crafted units. Using raw items such as rot, seeds, berries, or the spork trinket will consume them when a fish is caught. Crafted lures are not consumed, unless of course the fish escapes. Lures affect how attractive the line is, which in turn affects the likelihood of a bite. There are two main variants of the crafted lures, spoons and spinners, each of which has three versions, one for each period of the day-night cycle. These types of lures are made with the mushroom, respective to the period of day they are most effective during. Each fish has a different attraction modifier to each tackle. It's certainly worth checking out the page for them on the wiki, since some fish are not attracted to certain lure types whatsoever. In order to reel in your fish, click with a steady rhythm, a similar action to rowing a boat. Should you click too fast or too slow, the fish will escape. It's also possible to easily catch fish by casting out your bobber right next to the boat. As soon as the fish bites on, you can simply click once and catch it. But what to do with your prized catch once caught? You could of course murder the fish and use its delicious flesh in the cooking of some meals. The game is called Don't Starve After All. But be warned, deep sea fishing is a very slow and not necessarily reliable form of gathering food. Thankfully, there's a certain element of recreation in fishing. There are a number of tools in the game useful for weighing and storing your precious catch. If you're planning on catching large amounts of fish, consider building a tin fishing bin on your boat for one cut stone and three ropes. This structure will allow you to store up to 12 fish forever, as it actually increases their remaining spoilage time. However, when fish spoil, they turn into their respective size of fish meat instead of the usual rot, so not all is lost. The pocket scale is made with one log, one cut stone, and one gold nugget. It can be used to weigh one ocean fish at a time, considering some of its durability. The fish scale o matic is a structure made with four ice, two boards, and a cut stone that can permanently contain a living fish while displaying its weight. Examining the object will reveal the name of the angler responsible for catching the beast. They make for an excellent way to create a showcase of your largest catches, adding to the many late game activities possible in the game. Hook, Line, and Inca also added two new neutral mobs to interact with in the ocean. The first of these two is the Skitter Squid, a squid-like creature who appears inversely proportional to the fullness of the moon around other ocean fish. This means they'll appear most commonly on the new moon. Skitter Squid attack only when provoked, but even then prove rather weak, having low health and incredibly low damage. They can spit a glob of ink at the player, which obscures their vision. They emit light, and correspondingly have a chance to drop light bulbs upon death. They are currently the only way to obtain light bulbs on worlds without caves, allowing for ways to refuel and craft lanterns. Otherwise, they have a guaranteed chance to drop monster meat, providing a semi-reliable source of it. Narwhales and the other mob added. They appear around an ocean-born player every few days. They can either be attacked or befriended. Upon attacking them, they'll attempt to drill the player's boat with their horn. The horn can be snapped off after it takes 100 damage, allowing it to be collected, and leaving the poor creature without its main appendage. If the horn is broken, a small leak will be formed, but if the narwhale is successful in its attack, a large leak will appear, draining more of your vessel's health per second. Narwhales drop a large amount of fish flesh upon death. Alternatively, they can be befriended instead of murdered by feeding them meats, which will cause them to follow the player and toss items in the ocean towards them. Due to the relatively low cost of befriending them, they can make a useful body for harvesting salt from the oceanic brine pools. Their horns can be used to make waves with 10 uses. 
it's likely that the horn will receive more uses in the future. Some crockpot dishes from Shipwrecked have made a return, giving you some culinary opportunities for your prized catches. Seafood Gumbo, Surf and Turf, and California Roll all make a return, using their Don't Starve Together counterparts as ingredients. Additionally, fish morsels and Don't Starve Together also count as 0.5 meat in the crockpot. Large fish pieces still count for one fish value and 0.5 meat value. The most notable of these by far is Surf and Turf, a dish made with a total of 1.5 fish value and a total of 2.5 meat value. It has a higher priority than monster meat, meaning that two or more monster foods can safely be used in it. Surf and Turf restores a massive 60 health, along with 37.5 hunger and 33 sanity, meaning it's an excellent salt of all three. Be sure to add this dish to your quick access repertoire, it's certainly worth remembering. So concludes the brief overview of the new content added in Hook, Line and Inca. Overall, I feel this content aims to fill what was a previously pretty empty area in the game. Although it's nowhere near as populated as the forest, the ocean certainly feels a lot less empty now. Still, and I feel like I'm saying this in every video, I really hope the updates will eventually get more conclusive and create some truly game-changing content. To me, it still feels like Clay is afraid to change the meta and is vaguely trickling in content in somewhat random areas. By this point in A New Reign, Don't Starve Together's previous free expansion, we had already received two bosses one of which was acting as a pathway towards the ultimate final boss, the Fuel Weaver. Unless we end up fighting a new boss via the Narwhale Horn, well, it doesn't really feel like the updates are leading up to anything. It's definitely worth considering that the ocean is much more mechanically and computationally complicated, which would certainly have increased initial creation time of the new areas, but still, I digress. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have in store for this video. Be sure to leave a comment. As per usual, I'm always interested to hear your thoughts on this kind of video. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time.